Hello everybody, today we are going to embark on an epic review of solo string libraries. We've got loads of them and so I'm going to be going through them one by one telling you how much they cost, where they come from, what you get for your money and then doing a little tiny weeny bit of scoring with them like, like four or five bars or something just so you start to get the idea of how it all falls together. Um, so this is going to be quite a long video but don't worry because we have chapter markers across the bottom so you can hop through the ones you're interested in. I'm delighted that I've been joined by my very own um, Shed String Quartet. They live in here, they're very very small and they're incredibly um, useful because I don't need string samples. So they'll be giving me a hand as we go through this, giving me their point of view. Quiet down. Um, so let's get stuck in and um, I'll show you how this is all going to work out. So first up today is uh, Solo Strings by Spitfire. It's a library which has been around for a little while. Um, it's £349. Um, the download side's 43 gigabytes and you need 87 gigabytes of disk space in order to enjoy it in all its glory. Um, the kind of thing you get is this. So this is the uh, total performance violin. Um, you do have with this library an, a really large selection of uh, articulations. Let me give you a clue as to how that works. Um, if we just uh, zoom in a little bit, here we go. Right, so if I take you uh, through the individual articulations. Look. Oh my goodness gracious me. Yes, yeah, so, so you can have long harmonics, short harmonics, you can have short brushed baroque consordino. How, what do you, you say to the, the, you're saying to your violin player, give me short, whatever it was, baroque, for, I mean. No, they, they don't know what that means either. Anyway, it doesn't matter because it's <clears throat> there. So if on a Thursday morning in October you decide that's absolutely what you need, you're in business. Now, <clears throat> uh, the library is recorded in the Air Lindhurst Hall <clears throat> where they recorded all the other um, bits of the uh, Spitfire, Spitfire Symphonic um, Orchestra. Uh, it means it's got quite a big ambience to it. It also means it blends very well. If you want a solo line sitting on top of the um, uh, orchestra, it works really well. Um, if you want a really kind of tight, dry sound, it works less well. But let's now just plow in and just write a few bars of music and see what happens. Um, okay, I'm going to start Viola is always, as regular viewers will know, a bit of a touchstone for me as to how things go. Uh, spiccato. Uh, should we go start with some staccato? Okay, we can just start with that and see what happens. That'll do. Right, thank you very much. Okay, uh, now we're going to add to that some um, uh, cello. Okay, uh, now we're going to put some uh, virtuoso legato on the top. Nearly right. <laughs> really? Okay. Um, let's use this first deck as a second violin. Uh, what are we going to use him for? That'll go some pits. Okay. Okay, there you go. So it sounds um, really nice, obviously. Why is my... So that's uh, Spitfire Solo Strings. Um, I don't know why my desk's leaping about. Um, it's been around for a while. It's a really solid choice. Uh, it's extremely powerful. You've got a whole load of different um, options with your... Uh, articulations and your um, uh, legatos and things like that. So 
a good cho all of these are good choices and um shed quartet what do you think oh sorry put you down slowly <laughs> I think I broke somebody's Stradivarius in there. Right, let's move on to Berlin First Chairs. Um, from Orchestral Tools, uh, it comes to 299 euros plus VAT. Um, again, it's, um, it, it's recorded in the um, same studio where they record everything else. Uh, is it the Teldec stage in Berlin? I think it is. Um, and so it will blend very well if you're um, a, um, a Berlin Strings user with the rest of the, because it's the same ambience and all the rest of it. And exactly the same um, caveat I was sort of talking about with uh, Spitfire Strings, that if you want sort of super dry and close, this is not probably a library for you. But it is, once again, pretty comprehensive. Uh, let's uh, leap into the uh, epic world of, uh, here we go. So what you get, if you look down the side here, shall I zoom in? Are you ready? Shall we try zooming in? Yeah, let's try zooming in. Uh, you get sustained legato, sustained soft, sustained accented, portato long, portato short, staccato spiccato, pizzicato tremolando, and trills. Okay, so you're not getting um, the kind of enormous baroque brush whatever that you get with uh, Spitfire, but you've got everything you need uh, there to, um, to, to do whatever you really want, I think, for... You know, if you're going to do a really detailed string quartet and you want every articulation known to mankind, then you're probably going to come up a, it's going to feel a little bit limiting. But most of us don't do that, do we? So, uh, you know, let's um, have a listen to what uh, Berlin First Chair sounds like. Obviously, it comes up in the, well, not obviously, it comes in the sign player, which is, um, um, I really like it. I think it's really useful. <laughs> I like that sound because it's not overly um, vibratoed. Sometimes I think the vibrato is just a bit too much. Portato long. Ooh, that's lovely. Portato short. Everything you want. Okay, let's... Uh, Mute off me solo strings up there and give this a go. I tell you what, we're gonna. I like that portato, we're gonna use a bit of that. We're gonna use two of them, I know I'm cheating. This time I'm trying, gonna try and work out what my chord progression is before I try before I play it. So what is it gonna be, guys? <laughs> I'll work it out. <laughs> you just said you weren't going to do that. I know. Well, I did work it out. So that's Portato short. Um, now let's go for, let's try this, the legato. everybody wants to know what the legato sounds like, so we put the legato on the top of that. I don't know what this screen is doing. Whoa! Strange things going, oh, what? Oh, yeah, I don't care. I'm just going to go with it. Um, right, and with this, we'll use some spiccato or... That's what I, that's nice. I like that. Chunky, chunky is how you describe that.
We also have a base with this, of course, uh, which will add some pits. Um, where's some pits? Pits down there, yeah. Um, yeah. I think I'll have some pits. Some have the base, some don't, but of these low. Um, okay, uh, we haven't used our viola yet, and out of deference to the Viola Players Union, I will do so. Okay, here we go. Um, I've got to work out a middle part now. All right, I think. <laughs> oh Lord, what? Ah, they rather like that. Thank you, boys and girls. Very nice of you. Okay, and now onwards to Cinematic Studio Solo String C S S S S. Um, this is $299 um, uh, plus VAT and 42 gigabytes of your precious hard drive space. Um, it is, uh, it looks a little bit like this. Here we go, come up my friend. Boing! Um, it is a little bit different to some of the others and I'll show you how. Um, for example, if we zoom in, there we go. Um, if we take staccato and I'm now moving the mod wheel, it, the mod wheel chooses between spiccato Staccatissimo, staccato and sforzando. Once you get your, hand round, your head round it, it's quite useful because in real time performance, likewise, you can do pizzicato, etc. Um, with the um, uh, sustains, you've got, you can either have legato. or sustained. One of the nice things, one of the nice things is this. Um, the legato, I mean the um, uh, vibrato is controlled by CC2. That's my little blue lights down here. Ready? Vibrato. I like that. That's really useful. That kind of control over the vibrato, because sometimes there's just too much and it's a bit kind of and other times it's too flat. But actually the what you're getting there is a really nice transition between between non-vib and vib, which is good stuff. Another thing I really like about C S S S the right number of S's, yes, CSSS, is um, they have an ensemble patch, uh, which is uh, super useful. Really good. Right, let's get into this and write something. Um, what am I going to do this time? I keep on. Oh. I'm going to come up with 10 different pieces of music. Ah! Okay, we'll go for, we'll start with the... I don't know, don't do everything in C minor, guy. It's getting boring. A minor. No. Uh, G major. idea what's going to happen here. Oh, 
let's go for Celli. No! Nearly! Okay, now we go for a top line. Okay, come on in. Try and salvage this piece, guy. <laughs> this is not my finest work. Okay. Uh, Let's sh sh uh, sh shall we go with something which is not? Uh, am I going to go tremolo? Well, why not? Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Okay, look, um, with. Uh, all due apologies to Cinematic Studio. So, you happened to cop for the time when the wheels fell off. What? 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 That was not very polite. The orchestra. Uh, the sample is very. My composition was very. Okay. Moving on. Right. Moving on. Next up is Cremona. Okay. So. What would happen if you um, attempted to sample, you know, the world's greatest instruments, you know, Stradivari, Amati violas, Stradivari, celli, violins, all the rest of it. That's what the Cremona Quartet is. It's um, uh, £179.50 currently, but full price is £359. It's included in the Native Instruments Complete Collector's Edition. And it, um, the quartet comes with four, uh, four instruments, two violins, uh, Stradivarius, uh, Guarneri, uh, an Amati viola, and a Stradivari cello. Um, I actually had a, a a wonderful cellist I used to work with, Tony Pleath, uh, absolutely great, and he had a Stradivari cello. He said, "Would you like me to borrow my Stradivari?" Of course you go. <laughs> you know, and he says it, it can be really loud. <laughs> it did sound absolutely incredible. Um, you know, so there's this guy with a cello, which was worth more than a house. Anyway. Totally off topic. Right, let's get into Cremona. Um, there is a couple of things about Cremona, which is uh, uh, quite, well, there's a number of things which is interesting about it. Firstly, the way it's programmed, uh, you get to set up how you want it. Now, what this means essentially is, what look, so you've got Virtuoso, Detached Boy, Staccato, Pizzicato, well, then you can choose what you put in there. So if we want uh, spiccatissimo on that one, uh, you can also choose, oops, let's just bring down, what the key switch is going to be. Look, you can choose that, or you can even just go like that and then say that's the one. Um, so you get a lot of control here over how the um, instrument is set up. The actual uh, sound itself uh, sounds very much like this. Really quite a nice sound. Um, let's try the cello. Here we go. Hello, Stradivari cello. Mm. 
And you've got control over various aspects of the vibrato and what else can you control? All kinds of things. Um, you look, those are the kind of articulations you get. Sustain, Mercato, Detache, Adaptive, Virtuoso, Short, uh, Sotile, Single, Spiccatissimo, Spiccato, Staccato, Pizzicato, Tremolando, Trill, Ricochet, Sortile, uh, Crescendo, Diminuendo, and Longs, uh, Sulpont, Sultast, Harmonics, and Colleno. That's quite a list. Um, and you get controls over things like uh, the uh, position you know, on the string because it makes a difference to how it sounds. Um, um, but that's normally left on automatic unless you feel particularly adventurous. Uh, and again, you, you've got a choice of how um, the, uh, the, the vibrato works. Do you want it passionate, intense, wide, evolving, narrow or intermediate? Um, too much choice, too much choice. Anyway, okay, let's give this a run for its money. Right, I'm going to start with uh, a, a, I think I'm gonna start with a chunky little staccato cello. Or do I want? Let's go on, let's switch it up, guy. Uh, just ordinary spiccato. That's nice. If I say it myself, that's nice. Good, but there we go, it doesn't matter. It's not going to last long. <laughs> oh, guy, come on, have some confidence. There's a lot of character to this sample. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nearly. Why am I playing it up there if it's a viola? Why don't you start, Guy, with a violin? Yeah, why not? Good idea. Okay, there's one. Uh, retro record. It didn't do it, sorry. Oh, had me vibrato turned down. Let's see how this goes. Whoa, car crash. Okay. Now let's put something in the middle. Okay. Nice sound. This is harmonically conflicting, conflicted. which isn't any good, so I'm going to take it out and I'm going to change it for something short. And we're going to put in 
Uh, let's, what's Sotile? It's that. I do remember what Sotile is. What is it again? Okay, let's now listen a little performance. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cremona Quartet. Right, lots of character, um, lots of control. You notice that the vibrato again came in on uh, CC2 down here, which is, uh, which is a good thing. Um, yeah, and you've got multi-mic, oh no, it's good. It's really good. Um, I hadn't really played with it much before, and I have to say I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very much warming to that. Not least because, um, what you may be starting to notice as we go through this is if, what, you've been there all the time? No, don't be nice. I'm not boring. They think you've got the patience of the saint, the, the, the shed control quartet saying <laughs> Anyway, um, the, you can really feel the character which comes out of some of these libraries. And um, we got some others coming out, which are really, we got lots of character, which, you know, it, which can, you know, if it happens to be your thing and you want it to blend in with your style of music, um, then it can be a big plus. Okay, so coming up next um, is um, VSL, uh, Vienna Symphonic Library. They've been at this for a while. Um, this is the synchronized uh, solo strings, um, which is 595 euros. Um, so, what the synchronized bit means is they take a library which was written for their original uh, VSL player and they import it into their new player which gives you a lot more control over various things. So it wasn't originally recorded for the Synchron player, but do we care? Not much. Uh, if it sounds good, it is good. Now, welcome to the world of VSL. At first sight, this can be a little bit baffling. So let me just talk you through it. Um, you've got a lot of choice with VSL Synchron Player. So you can have single notes, multi-shorts, bow changes. Uh, you can have phrases. Sultasto. Yeah, or Ponticello, that's, that's clearly Pont. That's Tasto. Cross fade between the two. Oh, that's really useful. Scale runs. God, I, there's an awful lot in here I haven't found before. Right, okay, dynamics, uh, soft dynamics, one and a half seconds. Look, look at the um, strong dynamics, three seconds. That's a diminuendo, three, five and a half second crescendo. Uh, let's try um, PFP uh, over six seconds. Okay, I am very impressed. I had no idea it did all that. Right, okay, so we've got all that going on. Pitts, Lenio, harmonics, all the rest of it. Gore blimey gov, as they say. Somewhere in here there's also tons of legato. So look, you've got so many different ways you can play. Ah, oh, here we go. Oh, no, that's legato runs. Where are the singles? Ah, uh, long notes. There we go, legato. Loop down low, fast legato. You get the gist. This is a very, very comprehensive library um, with an absolute ton of choice. A lot of people end up use, not end up, but a lot of people choose to use VSL when they want things to sound really real. Um, that uh, I was talking to an incoming orchestration master student yesterday evening, and he works a lot with live players. And he was saying he sort of favors towards VSL. And, when I was doing a job last year, which was half sampled and half 
live orchestra, I ended up using quite a lot of VSL because it blended best with the live orchestra and because it sounded the most similar um, to a 50, 60 piece session orchestra. Um, so VSL is very, has, is very popular. Uh, for that reason, if none other. Well, it, you know, there's a lot going on here. Let's jump in and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take advantage of some of these um, dynamics. I really like those. Uh, PFP, three seconds. This is on the violin. So... And this is just with the built-in reverb, obviously. I'm not using anything. There's no external sound on any of this. Uh, let's go for legato, uh, auto speed, legato, loop one. Ooh, I love it when they do bow change like that. Auto speed, legato. Let's try this one. Vibrato cross fade. You see. Oh, you have to set it up with one of these dimension things, which I'm not going to do immediately. But in other words, you've got control over the vibrato as well. Uh, let's try the portamento. Nice. So we've obviously got bass with this as well, which some of the others you may have noticed did not have. Um, what are we going to use for him? Uh, dynamics again. Uh, let's try short crescendo. Uh, that's not short, one and a half is short. Oh, what happened to my middle line? Did it not record? Oh, cello. Also, you get two solo cellos. So this is cello. better that time anyway so um, what we're we gonna have here let's try something different okay let's go for the let's go for the cross fadey soul tasto to thingy bob I quite like. uh, between tasto and that try that to trim one Very, very nice. So you're getting a sense of what you're getting here. Um, a lot of power and control and a really interesting sound.
yet another thumbs up. Right, next one is something really different. And so to the wacky world of sample modeling. Now sample modeling is a really different way of uh, approaching sampling. Um, this is sample modeling solo and ensemble strings created by the legendary Peter Sidlicek and uh, Giorgio Tomasini. It's £326 including VAT and it comes to a tiny weeny five gigabytes of um, disk space. Uh, the reason it's only five gigabytes is because it uses completely different type, oh sorry, a uh, different type of uh, approach to sampling and control over the various parameters within the sampled instrument. Um, so the actual bass instrument is relatively small, but you have control over almost literally everything within this, um, this little sample world. So look, um, just to give you an idea, everything is run with continuous controllers, knobs and buttons and things like that. Okay, so if you go to the main view, um, here we go. You see an awful lot of things are happening automatically, but if you then move into real-time sound shaping, you'll see you've got control. First of all, you have to move CC11 before the thing makes any sound. That's your volume, but you've also got vibrato which is on CC1 and CC and um, CC19 is vibrato rate. So you've got the depth of vibrato and the rate of it. So you start to see, I know, as you flick through uh, pitch control, how much you, you get this little tiny um, variations in pitch, um, how the portamento works, um, Tambal shaping, you know, I mean, it, it goes on and on and on. And um, it means that you ha can control almost literally every single aspect of the sound, but that does mean it takes a little bit of getting your head around. So what you're probably gonna need at some point is controllers, with, you know, like um, these kind of things with knobs and buttons and, sh you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, because that's really how you're going to get the most out of it. I've got a, a, a monogram with um, this thing here, when I just open up the, you remember this thing, um, which I've set some of the common ones, 38, 26, 19, 11, 26, 25, all these are the ones which sample modeling uses quite a lot. Um, so I'm using that to control the instrument. So for example, if I use 36, um, it gives me control over the, um, the, sh the, the shorts, essentially. So it is much more like learning to play a real instrument. But learning to play a real instrument takes time. So you're going to have to invest some time to get into the um, video tutorials. And this is what I mean about different libraries suit different people's workflow. If you're looking to try and create something which is you know, incredibly detailed in its realism, this is a really good way to go. But if you're a quick smash it out sort of dude, then you're gonna to have to do a lot of, you, you, you need to invest more time in order to get the best out of it is what I'm saying. Let's look, without too much more faffing, I think I'm just gonna start writing something. Um, here we go. I quite like the way I'm getting longs and shorts out of this. Of this. Start on the downbeat guy, that would be a nice help. That gives you a good example of how the whole thing works actually. Right, let's add a cello line. Okay, 
okay. Um, loving that. Right, now let's add some um, violin. You've got traditional key switches. So there we go. So look, this is, I, I mean, this one of all the libraries, I've only really scratching the surface here because I could spend quite a long time just getting to know how it works, let alone actually doing it justice. Ah, look, this pizzicato is set to momentary key switch. So as soon as I stop playing it, it uh, stopped pizzicatoing. Here we go. Now it'll do it. Too, well that's cello vibrato gets a bit on the fast side towards the end, so I'm going to um, modify it using uh, a key switch, uh, a controller. Um, so uh, that one, this one here. Do you see? Okay, no, you can't see it because it's it's behind my head. Um, so let's just zoom in. There we go. Right. Watch that one going up and down there. That's the that's the vibrato rate for the cello. This is. Do you hear the way it backed off just towards the end there? That's because I can. Right, so that's sample modeling. Um, sample modeling, obviously, the, as you can tell, it uses very little um, memory. So for those of you on more limited resources, it's quite a good option. Um, but it is a very different uh, approach and a very different um, uh, kind of proposition. Right, moving on. The next one is Pateris Vasque's Strings, which comes from orchestral tools. Um, Pateris Vasque is a, a very well-known uh, contemporary classical composer um, from Latvia, I'm fairly sure. And here is a picture of the man himself, for reasons best known to himself, standing on a tree stump. Um, I'm sure that gives him pleasure. Uh, recurring themes in his work are nature, spirituality and the human condition. And this is there. That is where the, the recording took place. So you get the gist. It's a beautiful ambience. It's a small chamber ensemble, but it also has um, solo strings as well. Um, the nature of the library um, we, gives this... Uh, is it, very much in tune with the nature of his music. Um, so let me show you quickly what this means. Um, so we have, for example, um, um, with the first chairs, um, sustains, uh, lyrical, expressive, the things you'd expect. Then you have first change, cha, first cha, ugh, can't speak, first chair gestures. Lots of uh, glissandos, interest, look, glissando trills, two octaves. Um, um, trill short, waving longs, upbeats and longs. So you've got lots of little kind of interesting touches, which I think will make quite a big difference. If, but there's a, there's certainly a sound to the whole thing. Um, it's the orchestra. The uh, library is 549 euros plus VAT. Uh, it comes to a whacking 234 gigabytes of samples. It works inside the um, orchestral tools um, sample player. And it sounds absolutely lovely. Um, if we 
Right, so what we've got here is... Very, very nice legato. It uh, sustains lyrical, uh, sustains expressive plus legato. That's with natural uh, reverb. Sultasto legato. Portato, my old friend. Harmonics tremolo. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's got a really strong character, this library. Um, you know, for a, for a general purpose library, it might not be what you want, but it, for, if, if you want character, You've got all kinds of things going on in here. Right, so for the classical, um, contemporary classical uh, amongst you, there's a lot to uh, play with in here. Okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to write? Uh, we're going to use some, um, this is the viola first chair. Um. And it's, um. whoa, it's lovely. I did that before, didn't I? Come on, think of something new, guy. Oh, I'm still in um, overdub mode. Here we go, replace, that's better. Turn the click off because it doesn't it's not actually contributing anything at all here okay uh i think that may need a little bit of extra help volume wise Oh, it's nice, it's nice. You see how much instant kind of karma you get from this. I mean, so. a dodgy note. Up to there it was going right. So I'm going to take that dodgy note out and leave the rest in. But, um, and we will, oh, shall we have a gesture? Are well, we just going to go with, you know, it just sounds nice as it is. I'm not, uh, tremolo short, harmonic sustain. Okay, I'll do a harmonic sustain. Why not? That glassy sound up there is lovely.
So I think you can start to hear this has a really strong personality. If you are moving towards this style of kind of um, music, then this could be a perfect choice for you. Um, it's not a general purpose solo string library. Um, you know, if you wanted to do um, muscular Baroque type solo strings, this is not going to cut it. Um, but it does have a unique place. And also, obviously, there's chamber strings which go with this as well. So uh, a really interesting um, option um, for those of you who uh, are into this kind of um, style of music. Um, what I want to look at now is, I know quite a lot of you uh, subscribe to um, Composer Cloud from East West, to Musio from Cine Samples, and quite a lot of you have got BBC Symphony Orchestra Pro. So if you've got those and you're already subscribing or you already own those, what are your solo string options? That's what we're looking at next. Let's start with Musio um, from Cine Sample. It's uh, currently $9.99, $10 a month, or $100, $99 actually a year. Um, and in terms of solo strings, um, within uh, Musio you get uh, edited highlights of Cine String Solo and um, bits of Tina Guo as well. So let's have a little look and see what uh, it comes up with. Um, the Musio um, software loads one, uh, one ex an articulation at a time, so this is Violin 1. That's um, Violin 1 Legato, um, Legato Espressivo, let's load the normal Legato. What controls have we got? Let's see. We got reverb and expression, that's about it. So it's, re it's fairly straightforward, but you know, if you're already subscribing, uh, what Okay, let's see what sustain uh, espressivo is. Yep, it works. Um, let's have a look at the uh, Tina Guo. Uh, you've also got uh, uh, viola, and I put the cello in from Tina Guo because that's obviously distant acoustic cello. Very nice. It's quite slow to speak. So it's really good for those sort of more lyrical lines, probably less so if you wanted to play something faster. Uh, spiccato. All sounds good. Um, let's, uh, okay, let's start with that. Let's just do, just do something quickly to give you some idea how this works. Um, okay. So I'm going. Uh, let's go for a sustained viola and play it. Uh, let's go for their espressivo sustain uh, viola. Ah, uh, that's violin. Sorry. Let's go and find the viola. Espressivo, that one there. I, I double click on things and it loads twice. Go, you guy. It speaks quite, it's quite sort of pokey when it starts. Cool. So what is it? G minor, B flat, F, C, okay. Uh, it's 
it's not great, never mind. Actually, I'm now going to change it back from that to viola legato, because actually that's what I ended up playing. So, or should I go for a legato espressivo? Why not do that? Yeah. See, it loads pretty quickly, this system, actually. Oh, da -da -da. oh, that's Thomas Bergson's tune, isn't it? Uh, heart of whatever. Thanks, Thomas. <laughs> Come on, G minor, think G minor. That's really not my best work, but there we go. Um, bit of Tina. Proved it no end actually. <laughs> Quick run through then. So if you've got Musio, you, you know, you're off to a reasonably good start. Um, East West uh, Composer Cloud. $20 a month, $200 a year. Um, surprisingly, um, only has violin and uh, cello and not viola. I mean... Hello, I'm from the National Association of Violists. Doug Rogers, we got your number. We want solo viola or there'll be a horse's head turning up in your bed. Um, yeah, surprising really, because uh, East West do so much stuff, just not solo viola. Probably a, a, a viola player must have reversed into his car in a car park once or something and said, I am Doug Rogers, you shall not have a solo viola in my library. <laughs> no, probably not. Anyway, um, the uh, it's classic kind of um, East West opus stuff, so you get um, all these different choices, legatos with bow changes, uh, tons and tons of different expressions and longs and uh, lyrical and sustain and non-vib and verb and it's uh, round robins with pizzicatos and martelli and spiccato. So you've got, you know, perfectly reasonable amount of choice in there um, as long as you're not a viola player. <laughs> Sorry, I've got to stop going on about that. So what? Oh, these are coming up a little bit on the quiet side. Let's just add some oomph to them. Different libraries. Normally, actually, East West is pretty loud, but this lot seem to have come up slightly quiet. So we'll add a few dBs in there just to bring them up. Um, the viola I have put in is from East West Gold, because why not? I can, I can, if I want to do that, I can do that. What? <laughs> They think that this uh, is a, a really... Actually, I didn't understand a word they just said. I just was pretending I understood. Right, anyway. Um... Okay, let's uh, get something knocked out here and move on. Here we go. Why am I playing that on legato when it should be on spick? Whoa, you see the difference? That's East West Gold.
I left out the middle bit because I couldn't work out what to play. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, um, I'm going to add a MIDI track, which is my default workaround um, when I want to play things in. I think I had a better idea than that, but we'll see. Okay, that'll do for now. Okay. Okay. Oh, look, despite my misgivings, it sounds all right, doesn't it? <laughs> well, so I just want something to go at the end there, and then it's done. That's what I'm going for. I'm just not hitting it at the moment, am I? Okay, um, and I'll add the viola part in. One more time. Good, okay. There is a short piece using East West. It's not ideal. Um, it's not really string quartet land. But you can make do. And so we come to the world of 8DO. And in this particular instance, we're looking at their, um, uh, their deep solo, their deep solo quartet. So it consists of a solo violin, viola, cello, and bass. And if you look at this, uh, they're $99 each per instrument, 88 ultra detailed articulations, including 18 different types of short note, uh, three types of polyphonic uh, legato, um, they come to about 10, 11 gigabytes each, so it's about 40 gigabytes for the whole lot. Um, so there's part, lots and lots and lots of stuff going on. Um, you also need the full version of Contact to run this um, rather than the um, player. Okay, so what exactly have we got going on here and where does this fit into the great scheme of things? Um, here is, uh, um, here it is, this is the, uh, the violin loaded up. Um, in a, very 8 do ish way, this is how they like to organise things. You can 
customize these. You can click on the empty slot. There's all, there's all the shorts, look. Uh, Martelli hanging, Martelli abrupt, Volante, Cole, Mercato, Virtue, I mean, Pizzicato nail. They've even got one which is Pizzicato trem somewhere. Here we go, where's that? Okay, anyway, um, they've got um, lots of, lots and lots and lots of different stuff. So if you want um, performance ones like this. Very nice, actually, I like that. Um, so there's loads of, uh, oh, what's da da da? Da da da. <laughs> of course it is. Da da da. Yeah, that says da 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 to me. Uh, what else have we got going on here? Uh, I'm having fun. <laughs> suddenly having quite a lot of fun here. Okay, what's Cole? Okay, that's what Cole is. Let's try Martelli hanging. Now you may say, why do you need 18 types of shorts? That's why. Because if you listen to a violinist playing a phrase, you know, they would naturally play umpteen different types of short. You know, they're not trying to be completely identical to every note, they're expressing themselves. And that's probably what you need. So just having three or four is probably not gonna cut it. Um, so what's virtuoso short? Okay. Yep, that's a virtuoso for you. All trouble virtuosi. Right, um, and then we got the legati. I can, you can see that's waggling up and down. That's my mod wheel. If I link it with the expression. Um, let's now try a different type of legato. Let's go for uh, legato uh, runs. Whoop. Yep, that definitely does the business. Um, so you've got lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. Poker vibrato. Um, if I briefly turn off the reverb. Um, now, you see, it's, let's now play with this distance knob. Yeah, so you get a sense of it being close there and further away uh, there. Um, but it is quite a close, tight sound, and um, therefore I've added the reverb on as well. Right, so that's where we are with all this. Uh, let me put my uh, legato back on. Right, that's how it works. Here they are. What are we gonna start with? Well, as we've got 18 types of shorts, I think it would be foolish not to, shall we try, but it... What type of short would you like? Not maybe Volante. I quite like Cole. A bit short. Um, Martelli abrupt. No, that's also quite short. Martelli hanging. <laughs> oh, come on, guy. Make a choice. This is the trouble. You've now got too much choice. Okay, I'm going to go back to Volante. Okay. Come on then. I have no idea if that was in time. It wasn't even recorded. Or was it? Yes, it was. There we go. Dun, 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 dun. Um, Okay, guy, it's giving the game away. Look, you can see all the other stuff underneath. Okay, the 8DO library arrived after the others. So I had to get this out of the washing basket, <laughs> come back in here and pretend I was the same day. But you're not fooled, are you? Because you can see there's a whole load of other... <laughs> Do you care? Do you really care? I've got a nice cup of tea. Right. Let's assume that that is wonderful, because I think it probably is. 
and let's tuck in. Right, hello Mr Cello. Well, how are you? I'm very well actually. Uh, That's an interest. It's not a normal sound, but it's a nice sound. No, I don't want that. Okay, I'll go with that. Get ready boys, here we go. Okay, hello bass. Hello guy, I wondered if you could round to me. Right, we've got 18 types of short, we're going to try a different one. Uh, virtuoso. Yeah, come on baby. Bass me baby. Oh dear, did you notice the horrendous timing issue we bumped into towards the end there? Dun, 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 dun. Where did it happen? Dun, 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 dun. Should be like that, shouldn't it? I think. That'll do. Now, what are we going to put on the top? Right, hello my friend. We'll go with the normal one. We're going to go with legato violin, starting from here, start from beginning. That ain't too bad. Sounds like the opening to a detective series or something, which is the kind of thing this would be good for. So there you go. I mean, it's a, a very effective sound. You've got loads of articulations. And that's before we've uh, dug into some of the performance stuff and all the rest of it. Um, three types of uh, um, uh, legato. And um, the legato doesn't sort of punch through in that kind of virtuosic way that some of the others do, but that's not right for everything. And you can hear this has a kind of a delicacy and a sort of transparency to it, which I quite like. Um, and there are some sounds in here which I hadn't heard before. There's vibrato pizzicato and things like that. Well, you, you can imagine what that gives you. Bing! Oh, sorry, that's a bit loud. That is Deep Solo Quartet by 8DO. Moving on. What about those of you out there who've got BBC um, uh, Orchestra? Um, it's lots and lots and lots of you have got it. Um, those of you who've got the professional edition um, will undoubtedly have noticed, or if you haven't, here's a revelation for you. You have something called um, Strings Leader. There you go. And you have Strings 1 uh, Violin Leader, 
uh, you have strings two leader. These are essentially first chairs. So you've got solo, um, solo players. And each of these um, is not half bad. Because um, look, you get quite a lot of, um, of stuff here. Let me just get this in the middle of frame so you can see it. There we go. So you get legato, longs, longhorn, sordino, flautando, spiccato, staccato, pizzicato, tremolando, um, major and minor trills, Sultasto, long harmonics, short harmonics, Bartok pits, and Mercato. You know, so in all honesty, you're getting as much there as you do in most um, uh, libraries. Um, let's put these. Let's just go straight into it. I'm going to put, go for flautando because what he hadn't been into there. I've been in the same one all day, haven't I? Really. Um, I uh, um, don't think the boys in the box will be very impressed with that. On they go until I get it right. Oh, trouble is I can't see anything. Okay. Come on, guys, just do something. That sounds lovely. Um, that's spiccato, so let's go back to legato. That sounds pretty good to me. Uh, ah, I didn't record, you idiot guy. Oh. <laughs> I got it right first time. Sounds all right. Um. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> That sounds all right. Look, BBC Symphony Orchestra Professional, you're getting the whole orchestra and a string quartet. Go on, let's have one more for a performance. really like that. Good. Look, that's it. This has been an epic. Do I have a favourite? No. Um, they're all different. Um, every single one of them is totally viable. Every single one of them you could leap into life tomorrow and be delighted with. Um, each one has a character, as we were seeing, and what you need uh, is down to you, your workflow, your particular style of music, all these kind of things, you know. But it just shows you how lucky we are to have such an incredible range of stuff out there which we can get stuck into. Um, so look, if this is your kind of thing, um, did you subscribe when we first started? It seems so long ago, I've forgotten. You've probably forgotten as well. Anyway, if you haven't, 
No, it's that way, isn't it? Down there. That's where the little um, subscribe button is. And, um, you know, please check out thinkspaceeducation.com um, because we are well into all kinds of uh, music education from um, contemporary music production, sound design for video games, um, you know, trailing music, all... If you want to learn something about music or sound design, I bet you we've got something to show you. Something like this. See you next time. Bye-bye. There's probably more open doors in the games industry than there are in any other industry that allows you to eventually make a living from music. Every player needs to feel like the score is specifically written for their experience, exactly. not for the game itself. That can be the case, rather, that two different players will have two different experiences of the score because they go on very different journeys through the game. There's just something about the energy and game music because that's maybe one of the things that I like about games is that you are allowed to build a whole universe. So I would go to game jams. I did a couple of in-persons. I never did an online one, but some people swear by them. Because if you're really passionate about it, you're probably already making something. Mm -hmm. So why not make something with other people that actually gets put into something? Because you'll learn a massive amount in a situation where you fail. It's not the end of the world. It's designed mm -hmm. to be a sort of learning environment. Learning how to make use of the vertical possibilities of music and learning how to, to create loops that actually work and enhance the game is mandatory because game music is loop music and game music is adaptivity and it's interactive and that's what's so much fun yeah that's the most important thing don't lose having fun making music